नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस सेशन 22 इन अवर कोर्स ऑन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ पॉलीमर्स एंड पॉलीमर कॉम्पोजिट्स जस्ट टू हैव अ ब्रीफ रिव्यू ऑफ व्हाट वी हैव कवर्ड इन कंटेक्स्ट ऑफ पॉलीमर कॉम्पोजिट्स वी हैव सीन द बेसिक फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ composite materials that why the composites are made why the two constituents are combined together to make a third material which we are calling as a composite material then we have seen the classification of composite materials that how the composite materials can be classified based on the matrix as well as based on the reinforcement then we have identified that based on the matrix we are going to focus our attention on polymers only and the reinforcement will be in the form of fibers and the fibers can also be directionally oriented they can be randomly oriented they can be continuous fibers they can be random fibers they can be in the form of particulate or they can be in the form of a powder so that understanding we have developed and then we have seen that how to combine these two things together that is the matrix as well as the reinforcement so that is what we have to understand that how to combine two physically and chemically different constituents together so that they develop into a new material which is much more efficient much more strong much more stiffer much more resilient as compared to the individual constituents so that is the purpose of understanding this particular course that is the processing of polymer composites i think i have not addressed this point earlier that in processing of polymer composites our focus is majorly on the manufacturing or fabrication aspects of composites whereas the composites is a very large family there is another domain that is mechanics of composite materials in which we discuss about the strength how to calculate the strength of a composite material how to calculate the stiffness how to calculate the deflections or the strains developed in the composite material so that mechanics part we are not focusing in the current course here our focus is primarily to understand that how the composites are fabricated how the composite products are fabricated and in that series if you remember we have already discussed four sessions and the first one was on hand layer process the second one was on spray layer process the third one was on compression molding and the last one the previous session that we had was on injection molding now if you remember in injection molding also we have seen in two different variants that was the injection molding that is conventional injection molding and then we have seen the reaction injection molding which could further be classified as reinforcement reaction injection molding as well as the structural reaction injection molding so there are lot of processes which are used for processing of polymer composites depending upon the specific requirement of the final product and in that series we are going to cover another topic today that is the autoclave molding autoclave molding as i have already highlighted we have to see that how the fibers and polymers have to be combined together so this we can say is kind of a cooking oven that we use in our houses if you see we have my microwave oven and in microwave oven we put the food which has to be heated and finally we get our hot food out after a specific period of time so there what we can control in a microwave oven we control the duration of the time for which the food item will be exposed to the electromagnetic radiation so basically it is the autoclave process is also like a microwave oven only but the source of heat will not be the electromagnetic radiation but the source of heat will be some other source it can be induction heating as one of the sources of supplying heat to the composite material so here we have a cavity or we have a oven in which we put our raw material and the curing happens because of the pressure and the heat that is supplied through the equipment so basically this is a we can say 
process in which we have two major operating variables that is the heat and pressure. How the heat and pressure will be applied that we have to understand and the two ingredients have to be combined together. Now, what are these two ingredients? One is the matrix, another one is a reinforcement and the matrix here is a polymeric matrix and the reinforcement is a fibrous reinforcement. So, that is the understanding that we have to develop today that what is the autoclave process and how it is done and we are going to understand the autoclave in conjunction with or in combination with the vacuum bagging process also because vacuum bagging is another process which is used for processing of polymer composites. So, uh, autoclave plus vacuum bagging we are going to combine together because the time slots are limited we have to cover all aspects of composite materials in this domain of 20 hours and already we have uh, we, as you are as it is clear on your screen today we are in session 22 and we have 18 sessions more to go of half an hour each and there are so many other things that we need to discuss in context of the composite materials but if the time permits we may also go for a specific session on vacuum bagging, but currently we have to understand the process of vacuum bagging in today's session only. So, let us start the discussion on autoclave molding. In addition to that, we are also applying a vacuum bagging approach here to remove the air entrapment or the air bubbles that may be formed inside the composite part. So, let us quickly try to understand the process and there is a very good video from a commercial company which has put it in the open source and that we are trying to see today that how the process happens and if you are attentive you will see that video carefully you will be able to appreciate the beauty of the process you will be able to understand the mechanism of the process and you will never forget it throughout your life. So, let us first try to understand the process of autoclaving. So, autoclave method is also a open mold process. Now, I think first the learners must understand that what is the difference between an open mold process and a, and a closed mold process. In closed mold process, usually we have two mold halves and examples you can see on your screen, it is compression molding and injection molding. In compression molding, the diagram that we have seen, there is a bottom half of the mold which has a cutout and there is a top half of the mold and when the two mold halves close, in between we get the mold cavity which is the exact replica of our final product. In case of compression molding, we have seen there are the vertical mold halves, one is a fixed, another one is movable. So, they combine together, a clamping force is applied and in between we get the mold cavity and the melt mixture which has fibers also. If we are talking of only the processing of polymers, it can be a neat polymer, neat thermoplastic which is injected through the nozzle into the mold cavity or in case of composites, the melt mixture which has fibers also is injected under pressure into the mold cavity which is closed. So, the mold halves are closed. So, therefore, the compression molding process, the injection molding process we usually call it as the closed mold processes. Whereas, in open mold you have seen in hand layer process we have seen two flat plate molds, but they were open from the sides. So, therefore, we call them as the open mold process. Similarly, in spray molding process, there was a chopper or a spray gun which was used to spray the mixture of polymer and fibers onto the mold surface and that was also open mold process only. And today, we are going to cover autoclave which is also an open mold type of process. Now, let us try to understand the autoclave molding process. Autoclave molding technique is similar to vacuum bag. As I have told you, here also we will try to understand the process of vacuum bagging also and pressure bag molding method with some modifications. So, maybe autoclaving, vacuum bag molding, pressure bag molding. So, all these process are maybe the basic principle remains the same. This method employs a autoclave to provide heat and pressure to the composite product during curing which I have already explained. So, the two major operating variables in case of autoclave molding process are 
heat and pressure. Now, how heat and pressure is applied that we need to understand with the help of a diagram as well as with the help of an animation. In this method prepreg, now the new term has come in our discussion today, prepreg, we will have a complete session on prepreg and what are the prepreg and how they are useful that we are going to cover. But currently we can just remember that prepreg are the half cooked we can say the raw material which is used for making the composite products. Usually in a composite we have a matrix as well as we have a reinforcement. So, we have fibers and a polymer. So, prepreg is a combination of the fiber and the polymer, but the polymer is in the semi cured state. It is not in the fully cured state, it is semi cured state only. So, that is the beauty of this raw material that it has both it has both the polymer as well as the fibers. Now, it can be taken an example of a band aid. Usually, what happens whenever there is a cut or a bruise on our body or the skin, what we do? We take out a band aid, we open it and we apply it on the part which has been injured and then after some days we get cured or we get uh, hale and hearty. So, these prepregs also are similar in similar nature only we will see in the animation that they are also packed inside the films thin films which protect them from the atmospheric we can say environment or from exposure to the environment and then when we remove these uh, the two films we get a prepeg and it is a semi cured state of polymer plus the uh, fibers. So, fibers and polymers together they are called the prepeg and we will see in the animation that how prepegs are useful. Usually what happens in hand layer process we bring the fibers separately if you remember the animation that we have seen for hand layer process. What we do? We bring the fibers separately, we mix the polymer separately, we add hardener into it and then we put on the bottom half of the mold, we put our fiber and then we apply the resin with the help of a brush. So, there two things are coming and we are combining them manually. In case of pre-packed, the things are pre-cured only, pre-blended is another word we can use. The fibers and polymers are pre-blended, it is a sheet which has got both fiber as well as the polymer and they can be directly used as the raw material. So, that is the term pre -pregs. I think it should be, it must have been clear to all of you. We will have a complete session on pre pregging and there we will try to highlight the other aspects of pre pregging. So, in this method, the pre pregs are stacked in the mold. So, there will be open type of mold and that in that mold we will stack these pre pregs as per the thickness requirement. Now, how much, how many prepegs we have to apply that will depend upon the thickness that we want to produce. So, in this method, prepegs are stacked in the mold in a definite sequence and then sealed to avoid any relative movement in between the prepreg sheets. So, we have to seal this uh, layer by layer addition of the prepegs so that the, there is no relative movement between the prepregs that we have applied on the mold surface. But prior to that we have to apply a release gel onto the mold surface in order to avoid sticking of the polymer to the mold. So, that is common as we have seen I think I have not highlighted this point in compression molding and injection molding. In these two processes also before the mold closes there is a spray of a release gel onto the mold surface. Why? So, that the polymer do, do not stick to the mold surface. So, similarly, similarly we have seen we have specifically highlighted that point in case of hand layer process and spray layer process. In hand layer also we apply a release gel before doing the laying up and in spray layer process also we apply a release gel onto the mold surface. Sometimes we use thin plastic sheets also onto the mold surface before doing the layup so that the laminate do not stick to the mold surface on curing. In this case also in autoclave molding we have to ensure that a release gel is applied onto the mold surface in order to avoid sticking of the polymer to the mold. After stacking the prepregs the 
whole assembly is vacuum bagged to remove any air entrapped in between the layer. So, vacuum bagging is applied here. We will see how vacuum bagging is applied with the help of animation and that vacuum bagging, what is the purpose of that? The purpose is that it will help us to remove what it will remove? It will help us to remove the entrapped air in between the layers of the prepregs. After a definite period of time, when it is ensured that all layer is removed, the entire assembly is transferred to the autoclave. Now, autoclave as I have already given an example is a cavity or is, is kind of a oven in which we can supply heat and pressure to the composite for the curing process. Heat and pressure is applied for a definite interval of time. After the processing, the assembly is cooled at a definite rate and then vacuum bag is removed. The composite part is taken out from the mold. So, these are the steps that have to be followed for making a composite product using the autoclave molding technique. Now, just to summarize what we have to do in two or three sentences, the raw material is in the form of prepregs. The prepregs are cut as per the shape of the mold and then they are means put in on the mold or they are deposited on the mold layer by layer. The Number of prepregs will depend upon the thickness of the desired product. Once this, once this has been done, a vacuum bag is applied on top of the prepregs and a vacuum is applied so that all the air entrapped or any bubbles present in between the prepregs are removed. And once this vacuum has been applied and air has been removed or air entrapment has been removed, the whole assembly is put inside the autoclave. There we control our heat and pressure and this heat and pressure will help in the curing of the polymer and once the cooling, once the, this curing is complete, we will allow the composite part that has been formed to cool down for some time and after the cooling, the vacuum bag is removed and the product is taken out and it is the final product that we want to produce. Whatever has been explained now, we can see this is one diagram. It has been taken from Google images and this is autoclave molding process. We can see here, this is a prepreg, fibers are running in both the direction. Then there is a peel ply, release film, red color, bleeder which we usually use in case of autoclaving process and this is a vacuum bag which we apply on top of the prepregs and then the vacuum connection. It will remove all the air entrapped inside the prepregs and all these layers will finally be removed and we will get our final product which will only be the stacked up, stacked up prepregs. So, this is we can see the and on the bottom side also we will have the release gel so that the prepregs or the composite part which has been formed from the prepregs do not stick to the other half of the mold. This side we have ensured it with the help of a peel ply as well as the release film which is perforated. But on the other side also we have to ensure sometimes we may have a spraying arrangement of the release gel and before we do the stacking up of the prepegs, it is ensured that this spray is uniform all across the mold surface so that later on our uh, laminate or the cured composite product do not stick to the base mold or the outer surface of the mold. Now, let us try to understand the whole process with the help of a diagram. Diagram we have already seen, let us see the animation now. You can see the this is the autoclave, the blue color outer assembly. This is the mold that has come out, and this is the prepregs coming from the tape. There is a on the top side, it is a green film. The two films are coming out. These are the prepregs now. Prepregs are going into the mold cavity. There we will see this is the mold cavity or the final product that we want to make. These are prepegs coming inside and settling down on the mold surface. 
so these pre packs are covered with thin film so that they are not exposed to the environment and the automatic curing may not take place therefore their storage requirements are very very stringent so this is the pre packs have now been applied on the mold surface now we are closing it this is the breather fabric is applied vacuum bagging film is secured by the sealant tape we will again go through this video once so that you have an idea this is the vacuum pump vacuum is applied you can see what is happening here the vacuum bag is applying pressure on the and this is the autoclave the whole assembly has been put in the autoclave we can control the temperature and pressure and polymerization takes place inside the autoclave for a required amount of time or a defined interval of time this will be inside and then the finally the mold comes out we have to remove the vacuum film this is cooling of the composite taking place then demolding we have to do this is the product which has come out now and this is our final composite product that we want to produce let us have again uh, again we can see the process once again this is the mold that is coming out and the other side pre packs are being cut as per the def defined size and you can see the two films are being removed from here blue film and a green film will be removed this is a pre pack now finally in the usable form the two films were used in order to avoid the exposure of the pre packs to the environment so those have been removed now the pre packs are being deposited on the mold surface or being fixed at their required position the stack of pre pack is then laid in the mold this is a sealant tape is applied all around the edge of the mold breather fabric is applied the vacuum film is secured by the sealant bag the vacuum port is created the vacuum port is connected to the vacuum pump vacuum level is checked and maintained the complete assembly is placed in the autoclave temperature and pressure is controlled in the autoclave and polymerization takes place then this is the cooling phase the mold has come out cooling phase is still continuing vacuum film is removed this is demolding the sealant tapes are removed breather fabric is removed and finally we get our product this is the final product composite product now some of you may definitely be wondering that from where the fiber and the polymer has come in this and why we are calling it as a composite product as i have told you the pre packs that were coming and this green and blue films were being removed from the pre packs so this pre pack already has pre blended fibers and the polymer so this is a simple process it is kind of a tape which we are using and laying it inside the mold layer by layer depending upon the thickness required for the final product and finally we are applying heat and pressure so that the polymerization takes place quickly and we get our composite product at a high highly productive rate so that is the basic concept so there was one term which has come here that is a breather fabric that we are not going to discuss in much detail till today because today we have to finish our discussion on autoclave molding but definitely when we go to pre packing we will and try to understand that what is the role of the breather fabric in the whole process but today our process is autoclaving in which there is a autoclave oven which we, in which we can control the heat and pressure and we can make a composite product from the pre packs now what are the raw materials used in autoclave molding 
glass fiber, carbon fiber, aramid fiber, all these fibers may be in the form of unidirectional mat, bidirectional mat, mat of randomly oriented fiber. So, that uh, that is one thing that the fibers must be in the continuous form, they can be small fibers also, short fibers also, but they should also be available in the form of a randomly oriented mat. So, mat form is the requirement for the fibers. Matrix material can be epoxy, polyester, polyvinyl ester, unsaturated polyester. So, there are different types of polymers which can be used for making products from autoclave molding. Now, what are the advantages of the whole process? This composite processing method allows high volume fraction of reinforcement in the composite part. Now, this is important because if you remember in case of hand layer process, we were removing the excess polymer with the help of a roller arrangement. Whereas, here we have pre-blended pre-packs that we are using as well as we are applying the vacuum bagging also. So, whatever excess resin even if it is there will be removed and therefore, we will be able to achieve high volume fraction of fibers that is high volume fraction of the reinforcement in the composite product that is desirable from the mechanical engineering point of view because the fibers are the main load bearing members in the composite and if we have more fibers in the composite the strength stiffness of the composite will be more. So, this is applicable for both thermoplastic and thermosetting polymer composites which is another advantage. High degree of uniformity in part consolidation, better adhesion characteristics between the layers and good control over resin and reinforcement is achieved. And if we use prepegs as the raw material, I think all these characteristics are bound to happen. What can be the disadvantages of autoclaving? There is limitation on part size which depends upon the autoclave size. So, we cannot have a very large size product composite product being made by the autoclave molding process as in the case of hand layup or spray layup. So, if a very large size product has to be made, we have to go for either the hand layer process or the spray layer process. It is a costly technique for composite processing, relatively costly as compared to the other techniques. Rate of production is low and skilled labor is required in this process because we have to control the number of parameters. If we are using the vacuum bagging technique also alongside the autoclave, we have to control the pressure, the vacuum that we have need to understand and judiciously select. Then once we have put our assembly into the autoclave, we have to see how to how much temperature for how long that temperature has to be maintained for how long we have to cool the product. Similarly, we have to see that how much pressure has to be applied. So, maybe labor intensive or maybe uh, worker intensive process. What can be the applications? This process is mainly used in application requiring high strength to weight ratios. So, high strength to weight ratio definitely we will achieve we, if we have high volume fraction of fibers because the density of fibers is less as compared to most of the polymers. So, if we have more fibers, more reinforcement in our composite product better will be the strength to weight ratio or stiffness to weight ratio. And then this process is commonly used for aircraft parts, marine, military, spacecrafts and missiles. So, with this we come to the end of today's session that is on autoclave molding. I think we have been able to understand the basic concept of autoclave molding and we have also added another dimension of vacuum bagging alongside the autoclave molding process which has added another dimension to the understanding of this process as applied to the composite materials. If time permits, we may go for the vacuum bagging as a separate session or we will see that how we can cover the concept of vacuum bagging in any of the other alongside any of the other processes. But one important thing that we have understood today is the pre pregging and pre pregs. So, we will definitely like to have one session on pre pregs and try to understand that how pre pregs are helpful for engineers for making the composite products. Thank you.